And now I am joined by NASA astronaut Terry Wirtz to talk about space and military jets. Mr. Wirtz, welcome. Thanks for having me on. Um, it's uh, great to be there. Wish I was there in person. Mr. Wirtz, uh, a few questions to you. I wish you could have joined me today from the International Space Station, but <laughs> I'm very glad to have uh, the opportunity to talk to you and ask you a few questions. You have flown many military jets, including the F-16 Viper, as far as I understand. Uh, I think uh, almost every Ukrainian has heard of it now, and many have even searched for information about it on the Internet. This is because uh, Western countries are now considering whether to give us this jet so that we can fight the Russian aggressors more effectively. In your professional opinion, how much time will Ukrainian pilots need to learn to fly F-16? Well, I think the question is not... Uh... If Ukraine will get F-16s, I think the question is when. Will they get them this year or next year or in five years? I hope sooner than later. Uh, on February 25th last year, I was tweeting that we should be training Ukrainian pilots. To be honest, it would probably take a couple months for them to get very, very good and very capable. Uh, the, the problem is not flying the airplane. The problem is learning all the different weapons. Uh, and so a faster, easier solution might be to integrate those weapons that we have on the existing Ukrainian MiGs for a very short-term solution. Uh, but in the long term, it would take several months. And it's not just the pilots, it's also the ground crew, uh, the logistics. For every pilot, there's probably 10 or 20 mechanics on the ground that also have to learn how to operate the F-16. So it's not an easy, uh, fast solution, but we need to start it today because it does take time, and that should have happened last year, in my opinion. Mr. Wirtz, uh, do these jets need special airfields? No, they, they run on uh, jet fuel, uh, the same fuel that airliners do. There is a special military jet fuel, um, but they can also operate on basic airliner fuel. And one more question about F-16, because as I already told, uh, this uh, jet is very popular in Ukraine right now, and I explained why. So what is the operational range of F-16? That is, if it is based uh, at airfield in, so to say, Western Ukraine, will it be able to fly, um, for example, 700, 800 100 kilometers with full load to the east and return? The big question is, does it fly at high altitude or low altitude? And if it's at high altitude, it could go pretty far with two big fuel tanks uh, on board. If it's at low altitude, it could probably only go a few hundred kilometers. So it depends on the altitude. The problem is the Russian surfaced air missiles are very capable and you can't just fly F-16s up at 30,000 feet and ignore those. They'll, they'll get shot down if you do that. So uh, the, the question is, uh, how those Russian surface air missiles are affecting the altitude. Mr. Uh, Wirtz, uh, one more question and about F-16. Uh, people here in Ukraine always are wondering about whether it would be better to have F-16 or F-15. What do you think? <laughs> well, I'm an F-16 guy, so <laughs> I'm biased to the F-16. The F-15 is a great airplane. Uh, it's bigger. It, it can carry more stuff, more weapons. And the F-15E model can go really far because of the internal uh, tanks. The problem is they're a lot more expensive to operate um, and you only get half as many airplanes. So you can have twice as many F-16s as you do F-15s. I think for Ukraine's need, for what Ukraine needs, the F-16 is, is the perfect jet. So I think we'll get them uh, very soon. I really hope this. Recently, you responded on Twitter to Elon Musk, who said that Starlinks uh, on the battlefield in Ukraine could start World War III. You literally wrote the following. You are smart enough to know that resisting a dictator and fighting to defend your country isn't going to start World War III. Elon Musk is smart enough for sure. So what did you make that statement? You know... Uh... It's really been disappointing. I admire him. I love what he's done with SpaceX. But uh, to hear some of his comments about Ukraine, it sounds like Kremlin propaganda. And uh, it's, it's been very disappointing, to say the least. You know, what, what he's done with Starlink has really, really, really helped Ukraine. And I appreciate that. And that needs to continue. Uh, but people, 
some people are just blinded, I guess, or they have their head in their sand of what's happening. Um, Russia is what Vladimir Putin's doing is evil in Ukraine. It's it's trying to take over a free democracy because of his own ego and uh, evil desires. And so we just need to have our eyes wide open. And it's there's a lot of people out there that say stupid things, but when Elon Musk says it. He's the world's richest man. He's admired around the world. Um, I think it's pretty dangerous for him to be saying the kinds of things that he said occasionally. So I hope he kind of comes to his senses and gets back to doing the right thing. I totally agree with you. And you recently also wrote about the ongoing battle for space and that China is very active in this space. What about Russia? Well, Russia is very active in space. They're, you know, they're they're launching American astronauts to the International Space Station, which is um, something that should stop, I, I believe. Um, Russia is very active in space. R right before the invasion last year, they did a military uh, anti-satellite demonstration where they blew up a satellite, and it created a huge cloud of hundreds of pieces of debris that, to this day, still threatens the International Space Station. So. Um, they, they're a very active country in space, and uh, with somebody like Vladimir Putin in charge, you don't know exactly what they're going to be doing. Uh, so I hope, uh, I hope that changes. I, I don't know when that's going to change, but I hope it changes in the long term. And I really hope this changes too. And my last question to you will be as follows. Uh, what does a person like you feel when uh, you look at the Earth uh, from the window at an altitude of uh, 400 kilometers when you did it for the first time? I've written several books about this. I do speaking about this all the time. It's an amazing thing. It is such a beautiful planet. Um, I helped make an IMAX movie called A Beautiful Planet, and it really is. Uh, when I first saw Earth during daylight, my first impression, I have some photos in my studio, you can't see them, um, was I've never seen that shade of blue before. I saw the blue atmosphere. Uh, and I, I had a hard time getting back to work. I was a space shuttle pilot, so I had work to do. Um, but I just wanted to look out the window and see this beautiful planet. So Earth is, is really spectacular. Um, it's a wonderful planet. And when you see it, you wonder why there are evil people like Vladimir Putin doing these terrible things that they're doing. But the reality is they're there. And, uh, you know, we need to, the, the West and the freedom-loving people need to stick together and, and fight that evil. Mr. Wirtz, thank you very much for joining me today. And thank you very much for your answers to my questions. This was Terry Wirtz, NASA astronauts. And we talked about space and jets. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Latest news, trends, and analytics on all about Ukraine. Like, share, and subscribe. Any questions, proposals, and comments, contact us via email.